Chess friends, how are you? Magnus Carlsen is the genius player all the time and today I will show you his amazing queen sacrifice game that made history in chess. Imperfection is beauty, madness is genius and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring, so let's go, Arnish started the game with e4, we have c5 knight to f3, knight c6 and he chooses to play bishop b5, targeting to the tactical knight but he could develop his knight, we have e6 castle and knight e7, Magnus wants to move his knight to g6 and play queen b6 a6 to kick out the bishop, that's the reason why Arnish strikes the center with d4. I am trying to telling you that when your opponent have some gameplay then it's the correct time to complicate the game with center pawn moves or something, we have center exchanges and queen to b6, bishop goes out to e3, the bishop have a very good diagonal and the knight is aggressive enough to create problems, bishop is targeting to the knight but here if you think like levy and play a6 to kick out the bishop, then the killer move will come, knight f5 to discover attack to the queen. You may ask question by capturing the bishop, where is the attack, I get an extra piece and extra advantages, yes buddy, you get an extra check to the king and queen, you will lose your game sir back to the position, we have knight takes d4, Jiri played a4 first to protect the bishop and the main thing is that, you can't protect the knight, here best move is to play e5. Instead of worrying about what you cannot control, shift your energy to what you can create, so Magnus played knight takes d5, sacrificing the queen, Jiri accepted the sacrifice and after takes, you cannot take the knight because of this, and look at the position, Magnus have three minor pieces for the Queen Elizabeth and other pieces are equal to both of them, Giri folded his shirt in his hand and played knight d2, knight d6 and Magnus have some natural moves to consider. So Arnish takes his advantage of his queen by pushing the e-pawn, knight f5 knight to e4, g4 can be played to kick out the knight, knight c6 but it's not the best move, Fool Magnus doesn't know that when you have an open file and rook involvement lines then you should bring your rook make some troubles, so Arnish makes trouble first by playing g4, knight h4 f4, he is occupying more and more space but that is nonsense, he doesn't know that pushing the kingside pawns can be a kingside problem in the future. They can play like 2800 elo bots but their IQ is like 200 elo players, we have h4, try to open up the file by capturing the pawn, d5 can be played in the future and look at the Magnus structure, this hippo pawn structure protects the king very well, he is a true subscriber of me, he knows that three formulas of pawn and pawn structure, when to push the pawns, how to push the pawns and where to push or stay the pawns, the bishop looks like ugly but after d5, he will feel freedom, we have h3 to protect it. Takes and if you dare, to take the pawn, then d5 will come, knight d6 check bishop takes pawn takes, knight f5 to protect the structure and target the idiot pawn, pawn structure in a healthy condition and rooks have half open files, how will white make attacks? c4 can be played to open up the position but that wouldn't make any progress to white because the knight is well protected by the x-ring bishop, so back to the position, we have h takes g pawn and magnus sacrificed his pawn as a tempo, takes rook to a5 to get this file as well and the bishop wants to go in d7, we have c4 to protect it and b4 is coming. Life and chess imposes things on you that you can't control, but you still have the choice of how you're going to live through this, so Magnus played f5, b4 by Arnish to counter the rook, the rook is more important than the knight but you shouldn't retreat your rook so we have knight takes pawn, the knight is under attack but you shouldn't move the knight, you can't understand why you shouldn't move the knight because you have very limited IQ, Arnish finds best move d7 check. And after some moves later, queen gets the open file and involvements, this targets to the bishop and the pawn, so we have knight c6 and if you take the pawn then after knight takes f5, knight will get lead advantages, so we have rook d1 to attack the bishop, but it's not the best move, best was to play queen c7 to pressure these pawns, bishop c7 and look at the position, everything is safe, inferior human Arnish Yuri can't give a single check to the king, so he closed the position with g5, rook g6. Rook h4 is coming to check the king and get the outpost, another rook is targeting to the pawn as well, so rook f2 king to f7, and look at the position again, everything is safe, it's been 25 moves since Magnus sacrificed his queen against Arnish, but he didn't achieve anything because he is not blessed by stockfish, 
because he is not subscribed to my YouTube channel, so chess friends. If you want to become smart in chess like Magnus and defeat 200 LOIQ bots like Arnish Hikaru and Levy then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, we have Queen C7 check, Knight E7 and if you dare to take the pawn, let me show you the variation, Rook takes A4, Rook to D4, Rook H4 Queen here, Rook G4 check by getting a great outpost, King here, E5 to sacrifice the pawn, takes Rook A1 check, King here Rook G1 and that's it. Black is completely winning here, because he have very good rook position and the knight position, so back to the position, we have rook to d8, and we have rook exchanges on d8, rook takes pawn and you shouldn't take the pawn because of this, so we have queen c7 with the idea of playing rook d2, e5 to sacrifice the pawn and opening up the bishop line, takes bishop to e6 to target this pawn with rook, and after some moves later. We have this position where Magnus have everything but not the queen and Arnish have nothing but a queen, that's the difference between a super GM and a stupid GM. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.